Hello, hello, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. In this series we will focus on the Stranger Missions, which are the side quests dotted about the game. And today's side quest, or Stranger Mission, is a bright, bouncing boy. So we're going to have to make our way back to Saint Denis. So we pick up the story where we left off in the last episode and we have just successfully defended Shady Bell against the O'Driscolls, although we did lose our dear friend Kieran along the way. So after that enduring gun battle, hello Abigail, how's John and the boy? Uh, yeah, after that uh, rather hefty battle I'm not really in the mood to just travel straight to Saint Denis so we are going to utilize our fast travel and that will get us to the city nice and quickly so off to Saint Denis we go and I don't have to do all the riding Apophis will take me there he knows the way we've been there enough times now so here we are at Saint Denis and we're taking a nice little jaunt through the park and what is this we have here? A crazy foreigner. Let's go and investigate. This could be quite interesting. You okay, buddy? Oh. Fantastic. You Americans are nothing but shysters and traitors and slippery tongue bull suckers. I'm inclined to agree. Ah, here, help me please. Back to work with a bloody smile. <laughs> no problem, Marco. You are the great genius, so we shove the hot poker up the ice. Say thank you, Marco. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What are you? Some kind of. European toy maker? No, I am a fucking genius with poker up the ass, like I say. Toy maker. Hello? Do I look like I should entertain children? No. No, he says. No. <laughs> I am the savior of the mankind, buddy. Yes, you meet him. Professor Marco Dragic. <laughs> the one the silver tongue American betrayed and not paid the money to. Yes, he told to shit, man. So, uh, what's this toy about? It is not a toy, Big Nuts. It is demonstration of my genius, of my ideas about the source of life. Oh, it's a toy boat. Yes, it is a toy boat that I can power remotely using electricity and waves you cannot see. Good for you. Ways I cannot see. And still, the investors will not come. Just a couple of old ladies and a moron. <laughs> ladies, please. <laughs> ladies! <laughs> Gentlemen! Enchanté. <laughs> Hello. Hello, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, how is the piles? Yeah? Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, my friends, you are about to witness history. A demonstration of my infinite insight. All of us, we feel old. You, you are old. Oh. But maybe I can make you immortal. Mm. <laughs> Using waves you cannot see, I will power this You're boat. a goddamn fraud. And this buffoon dressed up like a buffoon is a stoolie. I watched them conspire, you morons. What? I, I never met this buffoon before two minutes ago. Isn't that right? Which part of it? Oh. So, Professor, show us your magical toy boat. <laughs> Only this time let the buffoon control it. Check if there's any funny business. No, this ain't nothing to do with me. Come, please, please. Uh, it is easy. Any moron could do it, and I am about to prove that. Here, take this, and this, and... Don't touch that. Oh, so we get to muck about with this little remote control boat here. Uh, we need to avoid whatever that was. Uh, poor Seagull didn't know what hit it. So we have some 
frigates we need to destroy whilst avoiding the magnetic mines there's one coming at me now now we could actually use the mines instead of the torpedoes uh, was that a mine I thought that was one of the ships right there's definitely one of the ships there we're gonna line up our shots fire and missed it's a lot harder than it looks we definitely got that one right so the next ship is up ahead of us somewhere and we've got a shot straight off look at that brilliant and you'll see I'm sort of sticking to the edges because all of the mines are more or less in the middle so we're just gonna stay around the outer edges that was a mine not what I wanted that looks better that looks oh, awesome right that was kind of fun a little bit tricky we did take a number of hits there we are smoking quite badly let's make it back to shore and see what the professor thinks this is really remarkable this is just a demonstration of my prowess sir the real miracles require investment now the dimwit will use invisible waves to destroy the little sailing boats before they get to other side of Kong. Still avoid Right, so this time instead of warships, we gotta take out innocent civilian sailing boats. I'm actually gonna start taking out some of the mines as well. Uh, well I don't know where the boat is. Oh I can just see it off to the right there. They're quite tricky to spot. And they are heading for the bank just over there and we need to stop them before they get there so we're just gonna patrol this little area uh, we get rid of the mines in the area and we can just take out the boats where are you going Oi, come back here why can I not shoot oh invaded from behind and we've got another one literally just behind us so we'll quickly just turn around hopefully we're reloaded yep one more to go I think ah oh, what an excellent shot that was I didn't even have to fire right so back to the shoreline trying to avoid whatever that was I think that was one of the down frigates from earlier It's incredible. No, no, no. Incredible things are in my lab back at Dover Hill. <laughs> that will astound all of you. <laughs> Mr. Marcel, can I count on your support? Well, this is expensive. It is immortality, sir. It is, it is very cheap. Perhaps over lunch. Maybe. I'm gonna go. Oh, yeah, of course. And, and thank you. Um, if you're ever up near Dover Hill, pay me a visit. There, I will really amaze you. Um, <coughs> I hope you will forgive my... So, the nutty f professor has invented radio waves, or discovered them at the very least. I'm sure they've always been around. And he has invited us up to his laboratory which is some distance off. Apophis, why are you in here? Right, so we're gonna go and pay the professor a visit. Now, we do have to wait a couple of days. Uh, it is quite a long journey, so if we take our time, uh, or if we take our time enough, it can take a couple of days. But uh, we're in a somewhat of a hurry. I need to restock uh, a few of my food supplies so I'm gonna get there nice and early do a bit of hunting while we wait but eventually a few days will pass and we can make our way up into the hills and to the professor's laboratory here now we're at the front door which is locked uh, apparently the professor being a European uses the rear door as their main door something that many countries I believe do including America so it's not just limited to the European countries 
so I don't know why I said that in the first place so we're making it around to the back here and there is a rather ominous looking tower just off to our left wouldn't like to be up there in a thunderstorm Disturbing me, buddy. I almost saw the biggest problem and you mess it up! Did? No, but I did. I can't get the bloody conductor straight. Uh, well, well it, it, it is uh, the geometry of life, the, the grand theory of uh, power. <laughs> it's the grand theory of theories. <laughs> uh, there is just one more big problem. <laughs> Maybe I solve it, but I can't get it right. I don't understand. Of course you don't. Help me adjust these things and I will show you what I mean. Here, take these. Oh, well, uh, I'm not much of a scientist. Well, you are an American. <laughs> Science is far beyond you, but you make a, a fine buffoon. Go. Captain's log, stardate 417.92. We have been down to the forest moon of Endor and we are currently searching for lightning. So we're looking for a Sith Lord, I'm guessing, who is displaying his force lightning abilities. So we're just going to follow this light beacon thingy here and the more it flashes the more in the right direction we are heading although you don't really need this beacon thing to see where the lightning is striking quite regularly like right around here I almost got hit very very nearly we must be ah I'm guessing this is the spot so right down with that let's get out of here before that thing gets hit by a bolt of lightning right which way which way detecting life captain and it's heading up in the mounting area that looks like the route to take and we can run while we're going which is a good idea because we don't want to get hit by lightning so somewhere up here we have our second conductor location let's hope we don't get hit by lightning I'm not foreshadowing by the way, we don't actually get hit by lightning, but we do have a, a couple of near misses. How far do we have to go, Professor? Oh, and there's another one. These lightning bolts are very close, this storm must be directly overhead of us. Come on, Professor, I'm almost in the next county. Are we nearly there yet? Right, so still up this way. The flashing is intensifying. Oh, God, that was a close one. I'm guessing it's around here somewhere. Ah, there we go, right next to this tree. All right, all right. So, con conductor number two in position. Let's find conductor number three. And uh, that looks to be off in this direction here. Captain, still no life signs but the planet is extremely hostile it is affecting my nasal cavity with all of these nasty mossy smells and we are running the risk of being hit by 
plasma weaponry from the gods. Ooh, never mind, someone's just lit a fire for us. We're nice and warm now. So I'm guessing we're close to the final area, yep. With a tree being set alight right next to us there. It could not, not be, really. So let's get ourselves back down to the professor. Oh, hang on, Cliff. Oh, oh that were lucky. So after cautiously trying to find my way back down the mountain, we return to the professor. I wish I ever went to school so I had a clue what was going on. What well, now? Well, now I become the second creature after God himself to bring life to this earth. Like this. Some. Ah, uh, the switches, the bloody switches. Okay, uh, climb up there and adjust them for me. Go quick, please. You want me to climb up this metal tower, or metal and wood, but it's mostly metal at the top, in the middle of a thunderstorm that is directly overhead that has almost killed me two or three times already. You, sir, are a madman, and Arthur is even more of a madman because he is actually going to do it. So we need to climb this tower and flip a few switches, which sounds easy, but the switches don't like to play ball. They're, they like to play little games with us, so here are the switches, three of which, and all of them need to be on the downward trajectory lighting up the lights on the dials so every time we pull a switch one of the others plays silly buggers right so let's pull that one no nope. so basically there there must be a combination to this to do it relatively quickly I don't know it so I'm just randomly flipping switches and I am flipping these flipping switches until we get all three in the downward position. Let's try you. We haven't flipped you in a while. No, nope, that didn't work either. Um, let's try you again. Oh, gold. Flipping switches. Right, you're my only option. No, ah, oh, you're my only option. Get down and stay down. Oh no, all of you stay down. Uh, let's, yeah, we'll give you another go. Oh my good gold. Arthur, you know you have two hands, so if you flip one switch down like it is, and use both of your other hands, you could just hold the other two down as well. But eventually we've got the job done. Might want to get out of there, it looks like the lightning's getting pretty bad. Oh, getting struck quite a lot. And we are perfectly safe. This must be a Faraday cage. Rather scary, but at the same time, fascinating. I would love to have been inside a Faraday cage whilst it's being hit with 1.21 gigawatts of energy. Right, so with the switches flipped, we're going to return now to the professor and find out what all the fuss has been around. I'm lucky, eh? Second time? <laughs> More like 7,000th! This is my life's work! It is incredible! What? Now, 
I am so <laughs> oh, You just saw creation's second birth. <laughs> I just saw a machine waddle a few steps. I have a son. <laughs> I am the luckiest man alive. <laughs> I, those morons, they doubted me. I'll see you later. Yes, yes. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, just before I leave, Professor, uh, might I recommend that you read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and see how that book turned out. So, the Professor has built himself a droid. I don't know if it's a protocol droid or some other form of droid, but he seems rather happy about it. Uh, we're going to hang around in the area for a couple of days, do a bit more hunting and uh, build up some supplies and a few other bits and pieces before returning to see how the Professor is progressing. And it turns out not very well. Now I should point out that uh, when I first re-entered this room I wasn't recording and Arthur does mention the lack of the robot in the room and there is a lantern that you can collect which I highly recommend it's an electric lantern so useful for cave diving and things like that so the professor has finally met his end at the hands it appears of his creation and that is the end of the uh, side mission as such but if you look it up online you can locate the robot and he is way up in the mountains and if you find him way up here somewhere up on one of these peaks up in the I believe it's more northwest area of the map eventually you will find footprints in the snow and they will lead us directly to the robot who is sitting up in the mounting area looking rather sorry for itself so maybe it regrets killing its father so there he is right up on the very peak up here let's go and say hello No, there is no more Papa, you broke him. And why did you come all the way up here anyway? Uh, does it have anything else to do with the Frankenstein novel where the monster leaves civilization for quite some time? It's a nice view though. I have to say, you have picked quite a nice spot even though it is somewhat cold. So we're going to leave the story there for now. I'm going to head back down to Terra Firma. I have been at Anubis and I will see you all in the next video.